two years ago I started playing golf and I was given a handicap of 25. Last week I got that handicap down to 7. So today I want to share with you 5 of the best tips that I could possibly give you to get your handicap down to single figures. I have just shot another four under round uh, net, so that should take me now down to single figures. I can't believe it. Get in. So it's safe to say that I was pretty chuffed with myself last week. Uh, I finally achieved my target of getting my handicap down to single figures. Anyway, you're here because you want to know how to get your handicap down to single figures too. So I'm going to share with you some of the best pieces of advice that I have been given and I've narrowed it down to my five top tips. Tip number one, really work on and try hard to improve your ball striking. Higher handicap golfers duff one or two shots every round and these are shots that you just can't afford to lose if you want to become a better player. The only way to improve your ball striking is by hitting balls. So visit the driving range at the very least once a week and concentrate purely on hitting the ball well and eliminating those duff shots. Now I'm keen as anything, a little too keen if you ask some people, hence why I'm making these videos. So a few months ago I bought myself a Skytrack launch monitor and this has made a massive difference in my ability to strike the ball purely and consistently simply because over lockdown I was hitting two three hundred balls a day in my back garden now I'm definitely not saying you need to go out spend a fortune on a new launch monitor but you definitely do need to visit the driving range regularly and get plenty of golf balls hit tip number two is a common one and you've heard it a thousand times work on your short game the very best piece of advice that I have received for my short game is to simply be more aggressive with your putting. Now I'm talking about putts from six feet and under. I used to be the guy that was never confident in putting. So what I would do, I would always try and drop the ball in the hole at dead weight because I know if I missed, then I've just got a tap in. And if I went too far past, then I would be scared and I'll think I'm gonna three putt and it was a nightmare. Anyway, the best thing that I learned to do was if you've got a putt from six feet, five feet, take the break out of the putt, get the ball rattled into the back of that hole because yeah, if you do miss, it's gonna go a bit further past, but have the confidence in yourself that you're going to be able to knock that ball in from five foot, six foot, whatever it may be. You will soon learn that the shots start dropping off your scores. Tip number three is a biggie. It's all about course management. There's loads of stuff that I could talk about in terms of managing your way around the golf course, but the main thing that we need to achieve is to reduce the number of double bogeys that you put on your scorecard. So the strategy works like this. I play the hole to par, but if I hit one bad shot, I then try my very best to make a bogey at the most. And as long as you stay away from out of bounds and water hazards, it's actually a lot easier than it sounds. Imagine you've got a par four, you hit your tee shot into the rough and you know that you're probably not going to get the ball onto the green with your next shot. Rather than gambling and hitting a long iron out of the rough, trying to go for the green, take a shorter iron, lay the ball up to a distance that you feel pretty comfortable with. For your third shot, all you've got to do is concentrate on getting the ball onto the green. Once the ball is on the green, then you've got to put all of your focus and attention into making two putts. Preferably, roll the ball up towards the hole so you've got a tap-in bogey. The same applies for par threes. Now, I'm crap at par threes. I very rarely hit the green in regulation. So all I do is I concentrate on getting my second shot onto the green, give myself a par putt, and then come away with a bogey at the most. Now, this strategy does rely on consistent ball striking, hence tip number one in the video. And there's a famous golf quote that says, a double bogey is just a bad shot followed by a stupid shot. 
Now, of course, you won't always keep those dreaded doubles off your scorecard, but the whole idea is to minimize their appearance as much as you possibly can. So all I'm saying is, if you hit that one bad shot on a hole, you then have to put a little bit of extra focus and concentration on your remaining shots and come away with a bogey at the most. Don't forget guys, subscribe to Handicap Golf and follow my journey from a 25 handicap golfer down to single figures. There's a not so funny story associated with my recent success. Because I've been playing so well lately, my handicap has actually gone down to 7.4. However, it was a bit of an anti-climax actually. I'd put my scorecard in, net four under, top of the leaderboard, absolutely buzzing. Um, only about half an hour later the thunder came and the competition got abandoned. I still got my handicap cut, I could have won a bit of prize money and I also had a two. So yeah, that was a bit of a downer on the whole day but in the grand scheme of things my target was to get down to single figures and I did that. Tip number four sounds really simple but it's simply play golf as often as you can. Over the last two years, I've been on the golf course as much as possible, and I've often been playing around on my own. Now, as boring as that might sound to some of you, I actually quite like it, because it really allows me to work on my golf game and focus on every single shot that I'm playing. If you're playing around a golf with your mates, yeah, it's class and it's a load of fun, but there's so many more distractions there that can put you off actually getting better at golf. So when playing on your own, as long as there's nobody behind you rushing you along, um, I would encourage you to play two or three balls on every hole. Now, by playing more than one ball on a hole, it allows you to play the hole with different strategies. So you might take a driver off the tee with one ball and an iron off the tee with another ball and see how the hole plays out. And it also allows you to practice a variety of different golf shots. Another bonus is if you hit a bad shot, then you can always drop another ball down, re-hit the shot and build your confidence back up a little bit. You can hit as many balls as you want on a driving range and you can become a great driving range player, but you're only going to start scoring better on the golf course if you practice on the golf course. And finally, number five, concentrate on every shot. Now, as much as you need to work on your ball striking, your golf swing, your short game, and all of that, none of it is going to matter unless you are 1000% focused and concentrating when you stood over every single golf shot that you hit. Golf is a game of fine margins, and the lower your handicap, the finer those margins become. So if you step over a shot and you are not 1000% committed to the type of shot that you're playing, where you're aiming and the club that you're using, step away, rethink and compose yourself again. Also, don't get yourself down if you have a couple of bad holes early on in your round. 18 holes is a long time and I promise you, if you remain focused and stick to the strategy, you will turn it around. The two four under net rounds that have just got me down to single figures, both started off with a double bogey on the first hole yet I went on to shoot two of the best rounds that I've ever had. To sum it all up, my five main tips to lower your handicap are improve the consistency of your ball striking, work hard on your short game, manage your way more tactically around the golf course, play as much golf as you can and play on your own and concentrate on every single shot that you hit. Of course, there are so many more factors that can help you become a single figure golfer. And I could have gone into a load more detail on this video, but for your sanity and for mine, I decided to summarize these tips as much as possible. If there are any specific tips that have helped you lower your golf handicap, then let everybody know in the comments below. If you've made it this far, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more helpful golf videos like this one coming up in the future. Also, if this video has helped you out in any sort of way, please click that like button below. Thanks again for watching.